My name is Arlen Kurtz. I'm your chairperson for the morning session. Welcome to the Farmers Forum on Grain Transportation, Getting Back on Track, Solutions for the Future, an opportunity to look ahead and discuss what improvements can be made for grain movement. This meeting was organized by APAS, the Saskatchewan Wheat Development Commission, and the Sask Barley Development Commission. We have arranged a number of speakers to better understand the current situation for rail transportation, what current adjustments can be made with the current regulations and legislations, and what may be required to accommodate various and all commodity movements out of Saskatchewan in future years. The bottom line of this meeting is looking forward. We will not look in the rearview mirror. We want to look forward. We need to plan for the future. Identify opportunities and obstacles in order to realize our full potential as a farmer and as a province. Our first speaker is Norm Hall, APAS president. Norm and his wife Fern and Norm's brother farm near Winyard. Together they plant 4,600 acres in annual seed and commercial crops, 40 acres in an agroforestry project, 400 acres in hay and pasture, and 1,600 acres are set aside for the environment. Norm has been extensively involved in various boards and organizations in his hometown and at the provincial and national level. He has been an APAS rep since 2003, elected to the board in 2005, and as president in 2011. Please welcome Norm Hall. Good morning. Um, in, in, the, in the bio that was done a couple of years ago, uh, it talked about 400 acres of hay and pasture. That was before the Cool Lakes came up in the last while. So now I've got 2,000 acres set aside for, for the environment. Fish? Yeah, or fish. But uh, the blue seeds that I seeded into the lake this year didn't, didn't uh, grow into fish, though. I don't know what, what they were supposed to grow into, trout or, or perch, but uh, neither one hatched. Arlen talked about that we aren't going to be looking backwards today, but looking forward. In a lot of presentations that I make when we're looking forward, I have a picture of a windshield. Broad expanse, looking forward. I'm a farmer though, I always look to the sides to see how the crops are doing as I drive by, but it's the windshield with a small mirror. You have to be able to see where you've been once in a while, but you don't stare at that mirror, you have to look forward. And that's what, what this is all about. We're gonna focus on the path forward and we want to take advantage of this opportunity to, to talk about grain handling and transportation in light of the legislative review of the CTA. I'm going to take brief stock of some of the events and policy changes that have led us here. And I'll go over why it's important for farmers and the Western Canadian economy and what actions our organizations are taking to ensure that our members' uh, views are heard and why it's important for you. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't do that. Uh, why it's important important that we hear from you today. We're going to <clears throat> talk here today about CTA review and the type of changes needed to improve the grain handling and transportation system. Policies and legislation affecting grain handling and transportation in Western Canada have, long, have a long and storied history. Continual changes uh, have been the norm and producers have, have a story or have a directly participating in these discussions. The CTA review is no different. We need to ensure that our views are, are heard so policymakers can understand why we need and expect out of, out of our system. To briefly go over some of the key developments over the last 30 or 40 years, we might start with the end of the Crow in 83. The Western Grain Transportation Act signaled a new era for grain transportation. While the act provided subsidies to the railroads to offset a portion of the costs, producers were expected to pick up the remainder. Rates under the WGTA were partially determined through a review of railway costs, conducted every four years to ensure that shippers and farmers shared portions of, of the productivity gains. The last such review took place in 1992. Subsidies were discontinued in, in 1996 when the CTA, Canadian Transportation Act, replaced the WGTA. The CTA also removed the requirement for regular costing reviews. So rates were set at the 1992 costing levels and adjusted annually for inflation. 
The following year, the federal government commissioned Justice Este to conduct a comprehensive review of the grain handling and transportation system in response to a severe service disruptions and grain backlog in the winter of 97-98. Sound familiar? Este's re report contained a number of substantial recommendations and reforms, including the, uh, the adoption of the Maximum Revenue Entitlement, or MRE, uh, for calculating freight rates, and we'll discuss the MRE later in the agenda. The M MRE took effect uh, in the crop year of 2000-2001, and because the CTA did not contain provisions for a costing review, railway costs were and continue to be based on 1992 levels. And we'll be talking about that later as well. The landscape has, has changed significantly since the passage of CTA and the Im implementation of the, C of the uh, CTA, or the MRE, sorry. <coughs> Abandonment provisions uh, allowed for the discontinuance of, or uprooting of thousands of miles of grain-dependent rail. The number of primary elevators has declined dramatically, and the majority of our total tonnage moves through high-foot elevators in, uh, in the system. Producer car loading has increased in the 2000s, but the number of listed sites has declined in the more recent years, at least on the main track. We've also seen the growth of continuous and the continuous success of short line operations up until the last couple of years. The success part, anyway. We need to acknowledge that producer relationships with, with various players has changed over, the, uh, over time as institu in institutions have evolved. Farmers' direct commercial ownership and control of the grain handling system has been redu reduced, of course, with the sale of the prairie pools and also more recently with, with several independents. The removal of a single desk has posed a new set of logistical challenges that we need to address. For one, farmers are no longer considered shippers. We bear the cost of the freight, uh, but are unique in that we do not have a direct commercial relationship with the freight providers. These institutional changes have demonstrated the need for more accountability and transpa transparency in the system. As farmers' direct involvement in the handling and transportation of our products has declined, <clears throat> we need to improve information flows all the way back to the farm gate. We need to acknowledge that farmers have become larger, more efficient, and more productive. Market demand for, for our agricultural products has grown, but the demand for Saskatchewan's other resources has as well. This means we need a plan for growth. According to the province of Saskatchewan's plan for growth since 2007, Saskatchewan's crude oil exports have grown 48 percent. Exports have increased, potash exports have increased 127 percent. Wheat, wheat exports increased more than 10 percent. Canola seed exports grew more than 170 percent. Pulse exports 81 percent and canola oil exports 449 percent. Saskatchewan's plan for growth contains a number of aggressive trade ex export targets, and producers have demonstrated the ability to exceed those targets. We saw, in, we saw this in 2013, when Saskatchewan surpassed the province's 2020 growth targets for agricultural products. At seven, 76 million tons, that, the 2013 harvest was a bumper. It was very clear early on <clears throat> as our members started reporting the concerns about rail service. As we headed into the winter months, it was apparent that producers would be unable to deliver their contracted grain on time and would be facing cash flow crunch. Spot prices plummeted uh, as basis levels wi widened to historically unprecedented levels. Ships waited in long lineups at ports collecting demerge, and there were some extreme instances where international customers canceled contracts and sourced their product out, outside of Canada. On March 7th, the uh, federal government introduced the order in council requiring railroads to move a combined 1 million tons per week or face penalties. 1 million tons combined. On March 27th, when Parl Parliament returned to the, to the House, the Minister of Agriculture introduced Bill C-30, the Fair Rail for Grain Farmers Act. 
The bill which came into law at the end of May contained a number of important provisions, including continuation of minimum volume requirements. With Bill C-30, the federal government also announced it was accelerating its, its uh, review of the Canada Transportation Act, which was launched on June 25th, one year earlier than originally scheduled. The CTA review was presented as an opportunity to identify long-term solutions. In the fall of 2014, the Review Sec Secretariat released a discussion paper and we were informed that the panel would begin accepting submissions at the end of the year. On October 16th, APAS brought together farm groups and commodity or associations uh, to meet in Regina to explore possible partnership in developing recommendation to the review. On December 2nd, a mere six weeks later, this coalition, Sasquheat, Sask Barley, Sask Pulse, and APAS, hand, handed our submission to Murad El Khatib, a uh, committee, committee member, and, and that was the beginning. In March, we followed up with the, followed up our recommendations directly with, with uh, Mr. David Emerson, chair of the review panel, and, and Murad. In April, our group traveled to Ottawa to go over recommendations with federal politicians. And this brings us today, to today, in what might be a final opportunity to seek broader input and engage directly with key, on the key issues uh, that should be addressed in the review. So why is it important for, that producers participate in this review? As we've seen time and time again, producers are ultimately re bear the cost of unreliable and poor rail service. The last two crop years are clear or a clear indication that farm profitability is essentially tied to effective and reliable grain transportation system. Producers need to have a voice at the table to ensure that the system can meet future shipping needs. With so much at stake, the system needs to be more transparent and accountable from farm gate to port. We need to ensure that policymakers are aware of the competitive profile of the grain handling and transportation system. Fundamentals don't let the market work. Without effective competition, governments need to know that regulations are required to ensure a balance and accountability along with the supply chain. And finally, we've seen an increase of resource development in Western Canada, and we're going to be hearing right away about the projected demand for the goods as we that we produce and the sheer volumes that we'll need to move. Trans transportation legislation affects Western Canadian or Western Canada's economic growth and prosperity. It's very important that we, we need to reform in order to meet our potential. Oh, I guess I was one behind, sorry. Um, we're here, to talk, here today to talk about this opportunity for reform. We're going to, to get an update on key issues that must be addressed as part of this review and what, from a producer's perspective, must be considered as we go forward and continue, continue to advocate for changes to the CTA. Secondly, today is an opportunity to engage directly with participants on a number of our coalition's key recommendations. We'll be co closing today's agenda with a panel discussion. We want to know from you whether we're on the right track or not. And finally, we're going to talk about the next steps as this review enters its final stages. I think I'm a little ahead of schedule on this, so I will leave it at that and uh, start the day ahead of schedule. Thank you very much.